hello subscribers welcome back to my youtube channel if you're not a subscriber please subscribe right now so today we'll be going over um tutorial sheet uh five that's on forces um as you can see the question on the screen um caption it says two forces are applied to a car in an effort to move it as shown um what is the resultant vector of these two forces b if the car of mass 300 kg if the car has a mass of 300 kg, what acceleration does it have? Ignore friction. So the first part of the question, um, what you can do is you can draw a sort of illustration or a free body diagram that shows the forces. So I've got the car, we're going to assume it's a particle. And then I've got those as our two axes. This is the Y, this is the X. And then we have the force that's going in that direction it has 30 degrees and it has it's of 400 newtons that's the magnitude and then we have this one they're not drawn up to scale this is 10 degrees and then this is 450 newtons so what we can do is we can resolve the components those in the x those in the y and then we find the resultant in the x the resultant in the y and then we go on from there so now we can start we're going to have the forces in the x we can put here the forces in the y so then we can have this as our we can have this one as our f1 and then this one as our f2 so what we're going to do we're going to have our f1 f1 in the x-axis is going to be um this when you project it in the x-axis this will be this part so it's opposite to the angle so we're going to have um sine so we'll have 450 sine 10 and then f2 f2 in the x-axis will be this one that's a projection of this so it will be 400 sine um 30 30 degrees which is here then um for for in the y-axis this one will use cos because definitely we use the we we'll use the sign so as remaining is the cos cos uh, 10 then here i've got the 400 cosine 30 so then we're going to have the resultant force so that would be the resultant force in the x and the resultant force in the y to find that we we'll have to add these two so now um here why we're going to be why we're going to be using the, the, the where the sign and the courses are coming from is as we know so Kato, for those that might not be familiar with this let me just go through it a bit so if we're going to have this triangle where f1 this will be f1 and then we'll have the 450 and then this will be the 10 degrees um if you want to find this part which is in the x-axis this part is the y this part is this part lies on the x this part lies on the y so now if you want to find um if you want to find this side we're going to say sine opposite sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so sine 10 is going to be equal to the opposite of this one is the force in the x over the hypotenuse will be the 450 then when you cross multiply the f in the x is going to be equal to 450 sine 10 so you can do this for all the remaining um all the remaining figures that we found here so now let's try to add this So we can start 450 um and then one more thing that i forgot to add on this the force f1 is going in the negative x direction but the positive y direction is going up so this will have to be negative so we can start with our calculations we're going to say negative 450 sine 10 plus 400 sine sin 30 which will give us 120 
1.858 this is our force in the x then the total force in the y we're going to have um 450 cosine 10 plus 400 cosine 30. this is going to give us 170 or 7 89.57 newtons so to find the resultant force it's going to be the force in the x and um, this one squared the force in the x squared but the force in the y squared when you find the square root the square root of that force resultant will be equal to force in the x is 120.8 1.858 squared plus 785.7.57 sorry squared so then the resultant force is going to be equal to this one squared plus 121.858 squared then the square root of this is going to give us seven seven ninety eight point nine two one seven two four three so you can just put this as seven ninety nine when we when we round off then since this is a since the force is a vector, we have to find the angle as well. So in finding the angle, we know it's tan theta is equal to force in the y over the force in the x. So theta is equal to the tan inverse of the force in the y is 785.57 over the force in the x is 121.858. So the theta is going to be equal to um seven seven eighty five point seven five divided by one twenty one point eight five eight then we press shift we press turn shift was then pressed so we press shift turn to get the turn inverse and the answer we are going to get is one point one eight degrees let me just punch in that again so seven eighty five point seven five divided by one twenty one ish it's off seven seven eighty five point five seven five seven divided by one twenty one point eight five eight then shift done the answer 181.82 so that's the those are the degrees that are th that's the angle with respect to the x-axis so where this is coming from is um so you can write the resultant force as 799 newtons 8 1.8 degrees with respect to the x axis where this is coming from is that we have the force in the y then we've got the force in the x then this one is giving us a resultant force so what we're trying to find is this theta so now i've got um the opposite which is which is exactly what is in which is exactly what is in the y then the adjacent is what's in the x so you can say tan theta is equal to the adjacent or the opposite over the adjacent so the opposite is the force in the y the adjacent is the force in the x and you do your math and that's how you get that then coming to the b part of the question um it says if the car has a mass of 300 kg what acceleration does it have so we know force is equal to mass times acceleration according to newton's um second law which says mass is directly proportional force sorry is directly proportional to the acceleration with the mass as the constant as the constant of proportionality rather um so meaning we can 
use the same force and then we're going to use the same direction because the law of feather says to say the force acts in in the same direction as the acceleration so we don't have to find the direction again so acceleration is going to be equal to force over mass so which is going to be equal to the force 799 over the mass 3000 which is going to be equal to so we have 799 divided by 3000 which gives us 0 0.2663 meters per second squared um 81.1 degrees newtons oh, just degrees with respect to the x axis so that's all for question one